Hi, so I'm just going to show you some of the new features that are available in Esprino version 2. Uh, at the moment I'm running this on the Pixel.js board uh, because it's a nice easy way to kind of graphically show you what's going on. So, um, since Esprino version 1.99, you've had the ability to um, use sort of ES6 classes. Um, so you can have a constructor, you can have a standard method, and in version two, you can have a getter. So uh, if I do this, I can say t dot uh, print, and it will print stuff. Or I can say t dot uh, unique, and every time this is accessed, it will um, it will run the function that's here, and it will give a new value. Um, so this can be really really useful. Um, you don't have to do it as part of a class. You can just use define property as well. Um, so here I've defined something called foo. Um, if I access it the first time, it'll say 42. But if I write to it again, uh, it will actually write the value onto the screen completely automatically. Um, and again, you can use this in um, things like this and um, in all kinds of expressions. So uh, this can be used for um, for debugging, or in fact, it can be used for doing things like register access. So you can set this up with peek and poke to a uh, physical memory address in the microcontroller's memory, or you can do the same with I2C or SPI peripherals. So it's going to make things an awful lot more readable. So one of the other things that we've um, we've added recently is the ability to use something called storage. Um, the memory area that used to just hold saved code now has a very simple file system. You can have eight character files in it. Um, so you can say s write um, hello maybe uh, and I'll just write in hello world in there. Um, and then you can read that back. Um, now this is written to non-volatile memory so it'll be available um, even after the thing powers off and it's kind of all wear leveled so you don't have to worry about repeated writes to it and things like that. The really neat thing you can do now though uh, as of Espino version 2 is you can actually write a module in here. Uh, so uh, oh, let's just write a number in there. Um, so now I can just require hello and it will pull it straight out of the, um, out of the memory and execute it. So this can be used for obviously much more complicated modules as well. And um, the functions that are defined in those modules um, will have all of their code left in flash memory. So they won't actually take up very much RAM at all. The other thing you can do is um, you can now write to, um, to dot boot naught, one, two, and three. Um, and these are bits of code that are basically going to be executed um, whenever your your device runs. So for instance, if I reset now, um, it's going to run that code and actually my password will be set. Regardless of what I now decide to save to this in any other way, I will still have my password available. So that's um, a nice way of either hiding information or um, just having very device specific information in a completely different code area everything else. It's also a really handy way of doing things like making bootloaders so that you can ensure that um, that you can update your main code uh, while having a bit of code that's always available for you. So um, it, uh, it's quite easy to um, to uh, have a look at this as well. You can just list and get a list of what's available in there. You can also do erase all. Um, and when you save code, either with save once end or with save normally, they also appear as files in here. Um, so uh, the other things that have changed have been um, to do with graphics. So uh, for instance, you can now on any um, instance of graphics, say g.dump. And this prints to the console a um, basically just a URL um, that's formatted as a bitmap. And the Esprino ID detects that and actually displays it. So you can um, use this for maybe remotely debugging the data that might be on a pixel's display. Um, but most likely you have an off-screen buffer and you want to see what's on it. 
and now you can do that really, really easily. Uh, as part of this, you've got um, as URL, which returns the um, contents as a, as a URL that you can just insert straight into a web page. And you've also got as BMP, which returns a Windows bitmap format, um, just as a complete binary that you could either save to a SD card or serve up over, over the network. Um, to make drawing images a bit easier, um, we've added graphics.createImage. Uh, so you can um, just call this with a bit of text which actually represents the graphics that you want. Um, so this is really, really handy for um, just little icons and glyphs and things that you want it to be apparent from the code what you're, what you're displaying. And you can see in here we've got that exact glyph represented over on the side. So um, you can also do, um, uh, now when you've got the graphics, you can say uh, graphics dot as image. Um, and this will return a image, much like that image, that you can then draw wherever you want. So if I just write that into a variable, I can say draw image um, and maybe offset slightly. Uh, and then if I flip it to update the screen, you should see it moved, moved off. In the same way, I can just set that. Right, I'll just reset it. So uh, other features you've got are um, some of the more useful ES6 string functions. Uh, so for instance, you can repeat a, um, a string multiple times. Uh, you can check whether a string starts with something in particular. You can check whether the string includes something. Um, you would have previously just done index of greater than or equal to zero for something like that. So this isn't really the end of the world. Um, we also have regular expressions. Um, so you can do dot replace. Um, and very useful for a global replace, but also um, while it's not a full regular expression parser, it's still got quite a lot in there, including match groups and things like that. So you can do an awful lot with it. Uh, you've also got the ability to um, use some extra array functions. So there's um, array.find, which is quite a nice thing, which basically um, executes a function for every element of the array. And if that function returns true, it will return the match. Um, but you can also um, do find index uh, to find out the actual index in the array where this thing matched. And again, you can do that with regular expressions as we've done before. Um, so the final thing is um, that Esprino's had a, um, a Lempel SIF encoder in it for quite some time. Um, this is used when you type save and you want to save everything into flash memory. It's used for kind of compacting the RAM down to make it a more sensible size. Um, this hasn't been available to anyone yet, um, but now it's really, really easy to use. So if we look at the graphics buffer, just so that we have something to work on, um, this is 1024 bytes at the moment. But if I compress this um, into a variable and we look at that, it's now 190 bytes. So it's a significant difference um, to store what you see here. Um, so if we want to, um, to decode this, I'll just clear the screen so that um, you, know, you can see that I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, so all we've got to do here is um, require heat shrink dot decompress. And the rest of this is actually just making sure that we can write into the graphics buffer, which is actually untyped. Um, so once we've done that, all we have to do is flip. Um, and the one thing to be aware of with, um, with Pixel is that um, flip is kind of smart. It tries to figure out what has changed on the screen and only writes what's changed. Because we've just accessed the, um, the array directly, it doesn't know what's changed. So we've got to tell it by putting a one or a true after flip to force it to flip everything. But there you go, it's, it's decompressed the, um, the array there exactly as, as it was. And obviously you can use this in combination with things like the, um, the storage library. 
to um, to write a whole bunch of images or sounds or anything else, um, and then take them out of memory and decompress them on the fly. So yeah, those are some of the features that are in um, in Esprit Note 2. Thanks for listening.